What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Bill and in today's video I'm going to answer some questions about the Bronco. First of all, if you have questions about Broncos and gen about these Broncos in general, I would highly recommend checking out uh, Bronco6G.com. Not sponsorship or anything like that. It's just there's a ton of people on there that are very passionate about these and know a whole lot more than I do. So any questions you have in general about the Broncos, I would definitely recommend that. I'll put a link to the forum down in the description below. But having said that, uh, I did get quite a few questions and I wanted to answer some of them. First of all, some, some, some mistakes I made in the first video. The tires here, the wheels, the tires, they are 32, not 33. In fact, they are 265, 70s are 17. And if you do the metric conversion and everything, it turns out to be like a 32 by 10, I think. Also, I was wondering why the door bags didn't come with it. Apparently you had to order those separately. Nobody messed that one up except for me. Another thing I didn't mention is that this does have the mid package. It's not the base package, it is the mid package. And the reason for that was um, I wanted to remote start and Apparently when I add it remote start, it automatically added the mid package. It's a little creature comfort that I've grown accustomed to having. Now for a size comparison here, you know, here's the Bronco and it is sitting right next to an Explorer. It's a 2016 Explorer. Now the Bronco sits a little bit higher. Overall length and width, they're very similar. The, the hood sits higher on the Bronco and the top sits higher it looks like the explorer is just a tad longer in comparison of like the size of the bronco one thing that has definitely been a huge question has been about this top this one panel over the driver is the only panel that has the headliner in it and the headliner it's like basically it's like dido mat or something but it's got a carpeted finish for some reason whatever it is at the top that's got a bunch of exposed fiberglass it's got one panel in the front that's got the headliner on it the rest of it does not the dealership did already order a new top anyway and hopefully when the new one comes, it'll have all the headliner panels. So I'm not making a big deal out of it. I'm happy that I even got the Bronco when I did. If I, if I have a less than perfect top for a little while, I'm perfectly okay with that. I'm sure they will make it right. Eventually, whenever they get all the things sorted. I, you know, I'm just hoping for everybody's sake that this is like a one-off uh, i know if i kept getting tell, told that this was being delayed because of that top and then that you know it got pushed back got pushed back and i had to wait extra long for delivery because i was waiting on that top and then then that top showed up in the condition it's in then i'd be pissed but the fact that i got mine when i did and if the top's not perfect you know i could deal with that i'm still happy that i got it when i did the yeah, first impression sitting in the driver's seat is this thing feels built solid it i mean as soon as you sit in these seats just kind of hug you um everything feels really solid the windshield it is short it is pretty flat but coming from the fj cruiser uh it's not as short and flat so it's a little bit better like if I pull up to the line at a stoplight, I can actually still see the light in this where the FJ, I would have to bend down sideways to see the light or just stop a few feet short of the actual intersection before to be able to see the lights. This, it, it seems to be a little bit better though. It is a similar windshield I, as far as being vertical and short but it's a little less vertical a little less short gas mileage i live in the city like it's a small city but it, i do live in the city where a lot of my driving is you know go a block stop at a stop sign go a block stop at a stop sign until i get out of here right, with that said i'm getting 12.2 right now 
it's 63 miles on there. I still have a lot to go for the thousand mile break-in period. So I'm gonna just spend some time driving around today to get that done and you know, I'll take you along with me and we'll see. So one thing I'm not a huge fan of yet, and uh, that is the auto start stop. Um, I'm trying to give it a chance try to get used to it see how I adjust to it uh, but my first initial reaction is I don't like it <laughs> uh, but yeah I'll try to I'm trying to uh, give it a chance and see if I can get used to it before I decide that I'm gonna just automatically disable it uh, this thing it is it wants to get up and go i'm trying very hard not to uh you know get too hard onto it right away but uh, here we are 55 miles an hour and it is raining we got some wind going it's pretty quiet in here it is it is not loud it is very comparable to the sound level in the FJ Cruiser, which did not have a removable top. I keep comparing it to that, but that's what I just, you know, I am just coming from in, in terms of a comparable vehicle. It's been a while since I've been in a Jeep, but the last time I was in a Jeep, it was also a soft top and it was very extremely noisy. Uh, this compared to that, it's very quiet. Compared to the FJ, it's uh, it's about the same. It's a little noisier, but it's not bad at all. I'll just be quiet for a second and see if you can hear what the sounds there are. All right, now we got some actual highway roads here. Uh, Do it 65 and get an idea of what the sounds like. Yeah, yeah, as far as the ride itself goes, this, this thing rides great on road. There's no feeling of death wobble or anything like that. It's, it just feels sturdy. Feels like I could just, you know, I'm already doing 70. It doesn't really feel like it. It feels like I could, I'm just barely on the pedal. I got a whole lot more pedal I could give it. Since I've been on the highway, I set a trip meter for it, and I don't know if that's showing up on the camera. I can't really look too closely at it, but uh, it's showing we're at, at so far at 11 miles on the highway, and it's averaging 20.7 miles per gallon for highway. It's only 10 miles, so it's hard to say. It's a small sample size, and we'll see over time how things work. It's actually turned into a beautiful day out here. So we saw how things handled on road so far. I'm gonna see how they handle off road. I'm not gonna go down too many trails, just some of the uh, the bigger, wider ones, because I know uh, during this time of year, a lot of the smaller trails are overgrown and the trees are just would be slapping the crap out of this thing and I'd like to keep it for at least a week before I scratch it up I think. I was worried about the, the roof and making a lot of noise. This floor makes a lot of noise. <laughs> These rocks hitting it. It sounds like you're being bum like being bombarded with rocks, just a little bit of rocks that are kicking up and hitting the uh, the underside here. So I'll go ahead and try to make use of this uh bag that we got. I'm going to take the roof off. Now this is the one panel that does have the carpet or the whatever. It's just basically a piece of carpet with some adhesive on the back. When I get this off, we can take a closer look at it. Like if you look along this edge, this is where it's like really rough like it's missing resin along this edge and in here it's got like little splotches of resin and if you run your hand 
Hey, it's it's rough. It's you can feel fibers sticking out of here. And a big glob of adhesive in there. So yeah, this I said so hopefully this is a I know an anomaly of even here like this whole this whole edge is like wide open you can touch the fibers along there it's missing like a layer of resin along along this entire edge yeah they slide in there fits back there i'm just going to leave it laying down since i don't have anything else i'm gonna go ahead and leave that down Here we are in the top without the front top. We got a little hill ahead of us. I'm just gonna try too high and see what happens and see where we get hung up at. A little little ditch here. And so far I said I haven't put it into four-wheel drive yet or anything, just Crawling along. And that's where we get stuck. Not eco mode, sport mode, no. Slippery. Let's try mud ruts. Off road use only. Rear lockers in place. Let's see what happens now. So far, so good. Heard a little scraping underneath, so hopefully the uh, that armor is doing its job underneath there. But uh, it made it up with no problem. A little bit of scraping. Uh, I know the hill doesn't look like much on camera. They never, never does compared to what it looks like in person. But it's still, it's a decent little hill. Yeah, I mean, I've seen a number number of videos on these things like I said all going off road but all of them have been in the Sasquatch package uh, showing what they're capable of and then also you know, tracks that were set up specifically to show off what the Bronco was capable of so you know, this is more of a I think real world <laughs> test that some of those tracks may have been Yeah, I mean, so far it's handling everything great. Variety of everything. We got some mud, some some rocks, some ruts. Oh, 
go up another hill here. Got a little slippage here. We got all kinds of warnings coming on here. Service advanced track, pre-collision assist not available. Service advanced track. All right, so let's try. Drive mode not available. Shifting into four low. Got that lock. So four low. We're locked. Go back into drive. Yes, I said no, I don't have a roof on. Let's try this again. Yeah, there we go. So yes, Sasquatch package would be nice for the extra clearance. I do want to get bigger tires on here at some point, so to address those clearance problems. We've done a bit of scraping under here. So not sure exactly what all that drive mode not available is all about. Not exactly happy about that. <laughs> I got all the goat modes and I can't use any of them. But I just manually put it into well, I just select it for low and lock the rear. And it seems to be working. Okay, I'm gonna switch over to four high. All right. Now shift to neutral. Shift to four high. And work our way out of here. Now we're parked. I see drive mode not available still. Go to two high.
So apparently we're stuck. In a mode, we can't change our 4x4 mode here. Well, when in doubt, just... Service advanced trap. Okay, at least it let us get into too high now. Working in too high. If I try changing the modes, any of the drive modes are not available. I try to hit trail control, fault, C manual. Oh. Uh, joy! <laughs> That didn't take much to break this. That I'm not happy about. But I'm pulled over here. I, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off, put the roofs back on, um, let it cool down a bit. We didn't even really get her all that dirty. But yeah, taking a look underneath. As you can tell, there's not a whole lot of ground clearance here. It's, or to the gas tank. So yeah, getting some bigger tires on here should help, I would think. And I don't think there's much that this can't handle. Um, if the electronics can keep up, I don't know what's going on with that. Goat mode is supposed to be goats over any terrain and got stuck on, you know, slipping on one rock and it just completely shit the bed. So, <laughs> not, uh, not exactly thrilled with that. I don't know what's going on with that. We'll take a look um, at the manual, see what it says. But in order to get back into too high, I actually had to turn the car off turn it back on and then I was able to select too high um, it wouldn't let me change out of change out of four high say because it kept saying the uh, the driving mode I was selected is not available in too high but it wouldn't let me change the driving mode so fun times the joys of owning a uh, first edition fresh out of the factory hasn't had all the bugs worked out of it nah. Yeah, addition vehicle. All right, so start it back up. I got a pre-collision assist not available and service advanced track warnings coming up. All right, now that I got off the rocky road, I'm on pavement. It seems all of my warning lights have gone away. Let's see if it'll allow me. Yeah. Now it'll let me change modes. So, I don't know. So, drove around a bit more, met up with at Hoosier Broncos. Uh, got some pictures and uh, rolling shots with him. It's great to hang out and meet. You know, I had one other issue with the Bronco. Um, as I was driving, I got a warning saying service the charging system. And then the battery light came on. That came on, stayed on for, I don't know, about a half hour and then just went away. So, you know, the manual does say for the first thousand miles, expect some uh, strange behaviors. Hopefully that's all it is. Things working themselves out. Uh, they had the two issues, the goat mode, uh, it worked itself out. The battery, the charging systems, uh, you know, made, made it look like the alternator wasn't charging the battery, uh, but that worked itself out, so. Hopefully it's just break in issues and everything will be fine. Gave me a couple of scares today. <laughs> I expected some growing pains with it being very first year of it, just fresh off the line. Uh, I expect we'll pro I'll probably see some issues with it. But anyway, that's going to go ahead and wrap up this video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more videos like this in the future, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you next time.